great. All right. What's Chuck doing? All right. Hey, good morning. It's good to be with you uh, this morning on Baptism Sunday morning. I, I really, really love these important days and times in the life of our church. Um, and I'm grateful just for the opportunity to get to speak with you today. And the reason this is an important day is because baptism is one of those, one of those moments in time where we're really de- dealing with, for kind of a lack of a better term, like what we might call a thin space. You know what that means? This, the, the idea of a thin space has been around in Christianity since the 6th century. But it's, it's those moments where heaven and earth draw really close. Uh, It's like the usual gap kind of shrinks and the presence of God is here. Uh, Now in in the church, we got these these two great practices, the sacraments, water baptism and communion. And they're kind of like these these physical things we do with our bodies. But at at the same time, there's this, there's something supernatural happening, right? It's not magical. It's, It's supernatural. It's just, it isn't just the physical act of getting in the water. There's something happening in the heavenlies. And also, as a, as a couple weeks ago, as I talked about, we, we talked about the difference be, between kind of professed truth versus embodied truth. And that's also a part of what these sacraments mean in our lives. Uh, they involve our bodies, but they teach and impart things in us that go way beyond just kind of knowing stuff in our heads. What I really love about this thin space, especially when it comes to water baptism, is that it, it feels like we get to really kind of lean into something special happening in the heavenly realm. And that's what we're going to dig into this morning, all right? I'm going to take this out. Okay, for those of you who have been baptized before, maybe it's an opportunity to kind of look back and to remember. Uh, I don't know all your stories, but for me, I was, I was saved out of life of sin and degradation at about the age of four and a half. And Things went a little sideways later for a while, but I, I grew up in the church. I was at church two or three times a week. I really can't remember when I wasn't in some measure or shape or form a Christian. Uh, but I do remember my water baptism. It's, it's, that moment is like a milestone, a distinct point in time that I'll never forget. So I wanted to take a few moments, just kind of focus our thinking on what it is that we're doing today. And, and some of you didn't come planning to be baptized today, but I want you to know if you feel the tug of the Holy Spirit, pay attention to that. Uh, That's that thin space we're talking about. And if that's the case, and even if you've been, you know, hanging out at the upper room for a while, months or even years, and you never decided, like, I'm in for this thing, this is a way of step taking that step. So just consider whether that might be a possibility for you this morning, and we'll make that opportunity available to you during the baptism. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Acts 2.37 to start. That's where we'll be. In, in this passage, in the context of this, is it is the day of Pentecost. Uh, in other words, the Holy Spirit has come and has begun to draw men and women into the kingdom by force, 3,000 people. Peter's preaching the life and death and resurrection of Jesus and all that meant. And the people say, okay, like we love what we're hearing. We are in. What do we need to do? Here's the scripture, Acts 2, 37 through 38. It says, when the people heard this, that's Peter talking, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So notice a couple things. First, Peter says, repent. And to define repentance, repentance is to, in the light of a new reality, turn and walk a different way. That's what it means. You're going in one direction, and you turn around. Repentance is not about some emotion you have. It doesn't mean you feel sorry for a long time. Repentance is a volatile, volatile, sorry, volitional decision. You may feel stuff, sure, you may not, but repentance is a decision to turn your life around. That's what repentance means. So Peter's basically saying, you've been forgiven, now step into it. And in the waters of baptism, die to the old way of being and be raised to the newness of life in Christ. That's what Peter's inviting us into. So as these folks get in that tub of, full of Columbiana's finest tap water, they are making a public statement in a visceral, embodied way by getting their bodies involved in what's already begun to happen as they've begun to turn towards God, who has forgiven us. It's an image of 
death to self, death, death to destructive patterns, death to sin and burial, and then being raised to new life, to walk in the reality of the forgiven life with no condemnation. In baptism, we are invited to step into that righteousness and follow Jesus into new life. Paul talks about this in Romans 6, 1 through 4, where he says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Notice how he says that. Paul talks about being baptized into Christ Jesus. There are some out there, some people in some churches, who have made baptism into kind of a formula. Right? You have to, you have to, say, these, you have to say these words. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. You've got to say this and that. The name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will say those words when we baptize you, right? But what Paul's inviting us to is not a rote formulaic action. What he's inviting us to do through baptism is to step into the reality of life in Christ. We're stepping into Christ Jesus. We're joining ourselves with him. That's why he says, wait a minute. Shall we sin so that grace may abound? Paul's saying, you're, you're die, you've died to sin. You've been baptized into new life. Why do you want to reintroduce sin back into your soul when Jesus has put it to death? Why do you want to reintroduce death back into you when new life is available? When now you have the freedom, capacity, ability by the grace of God, empowered by the Spirit, to stop self-destructing through sin. Now here's the thing. This is the thing. Some of us have maybe, every once in a while, gotten fairly comfortable with self-destruction. We have a certain level of sin that we've been able to live with. So Paul says, you don't live in sin's neighborhood anymore. Don't go visiting. Right? You're built for something else. You're built for a life of righteousness. So step into it. Now, why is that important? Why is any of this important? Why repent and turn from sin and be baptized into Christ's righteousness to walk in newness of life? Well, this is the, because this is the way you begin to partner with God. I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of darkness in the world right now. And we can become immune, can't we? Right? Because we're just pummeled with it. It's as easy as anything else to just turn it off and check out and just go on. But as citizens of the kingdom of God, you can't really do that. It's not really an option. God wants to save the world. Who's he going to use? Right. That's why righteousness matters. It's us. We pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? We're a big part of the answer to that prayer. So in baptism, we say that we are moving away from self-destruction towards righteousness and into partnership into what it, with God, into what he's doing. When we do that, we're stepping into usefulness in the kingdom. We are baptized into Christ. That means we're invited into his mission. We're invited into his strategies. We're invited into his way. And so we bear witness to his goodness. We declare that we believe that Jesus is the hope of the world. That's what he's inviting us into. This is what Paul says in Galatians chapter 3. He says this. So in Christ Jesus, there's our, there's our phrase, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Here Paul is kind of laying out, kind of giving us all the ways in which the ancient Near Eastern culture categorized and divided itself. These are all labels. These are all like files in the filing cabinet of social strata. Uh, we know where we fit based on our social, socioeconomic status. We know where we fit based on our religious belief systems. Uh, we know where we fit based on our gender, right? And not only do we know where we fit, we know where everybody else fits. And we know, therefore, kind of how to treat everybody else based on where they fit. And Paul's writing to the church in Galatia where, there's, where they're wrestling with a hyper-divisive, polarized culture. And he's saying, you who've been baptized, you all who are followers of Jesus... 
you're not dividing, we're, not, we're no longer dividing ourselves based on status or wealth level or any other categories. Aren't you glad we don't live in a polarized culture like that anymore? <laughs> I think, I might get myself in trouble here. I think maybe if Paul was writing to the church in North America, he would say, there's neither Democrat nor Republican. You're all one in Christ. He's saying, as those in Christ, you don't get to label and categorize and be polarized against your brothers and sisters. He's saying, don't let those categories that the world puts on you, on people, divide us. Because by doing so, you are undermining the very thing that will save the world, the family of God. So, right, let's vote. Let's be responsible stewards. Let's be good citizens. But at the end of the day, let's not count on it for actual change. Why? Because change comes from your engagement in your neighborhood. Change comes from us vibrating with the life of the kingdom. Laws can change how systems operate. We want lawmakers to make good decisions for the good of our nation. But laws can't change anybody's heart. Laws can affect and retain order. Great. They cannot change the human soul. The church is in the soul business. So today we celebrate that these folks are being baptized into Christ, that they are now part of a new community, a new family that's not defined by those other ways of understanding. And in fact, this is how important this is. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. He says this, verse 3. He says, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. You see what he's saying? He's saying in baptism, in following Jesus, in joining into this new community, you're, you're joining the church, right? Not, not necessarily this church. Oh, this, is, this is not a bad church to be a part of. But the big C church, the body of Christ on the earth, you step into that membership, if, if you will. And Paul says the Holy Spirit is working that you, the church, towards unity. He wants us to get along. He wants us to not let the things that divide us become greater than the things that unite us. He says work as hard as you can to preserve the unity of the Spirit. When you come out of the water, when you come out of the water, all those previous ways of defining yourself and being understood by others are null and void. You now belong to the family of those who are in Christ. Now think about what that means. That means this is an all play. Everybody brings something to the table. Everybody has value and worth and significance regardless of their age, regardless of their gender, regardless of their socioeconomic status. Everybody brings something as a part of the body of Christ. You all are part of what God is doing. Please notice, I'm also talking about children. I love that there's children being baptized today. I love it. This is one of the reasons I love the way we do kids' ministry here. Kids are not the object of our ministry. They are partners with us in ministry. Kids can pray. Kids can lead. Kids can prophesy. Kids can be involved in the work of the ministry of the Spirit. Why? Because it's not the kids. It's the Holy Spirit who's in the kids. It's the same Holy Spirit that's in us, old people. They just have more energy. So that means I want to celebrate the gifts that God has put in others. Why? Because it's not about me. It's not my kingdom. And I don't know about you, but for me, I just want to be a part of what God's doing. I don't need to be in the front, right? I don't need a position. And you'll notice if you read the Bible that the New Testament doesn't recognize people by status or offices. It recognizes the gifts. So don't think, well, I'm too young or I'm not qualified enough. Everyone has value and worth and gifts to use for the good of the family of God. All right, so let me summarize, and then we'll get to baptizing. Kind of all over the place. So, so to summarize, what's happening when we are baptized is three things. First of all, we are bearing witness. We're making a public statement to everybody watching. For those of you who are being baptized, you have made a declaration for Jesus that you have decided to be his disciple. You decided to follow him. You decided to learn life from him. And you're making the public statement. Second, 
you are choosing to join in the community of the people of God. You are part of the family of God. And then third thing is, you're, you become commissioned to ministry, young and old alike. You are the children of God, you are part of the body of Christ, and you bring something to the table, and now you're commissioned to partner with God in his mission. It's a big deal. And we're grateful to be able to celebrate with those being baptized this morning, all right? So those who are scheduled to be baptized today, and those who'd like to be baptized today, okay, come on down. We got towels and dry clothes, if you didn't bring that stuff. We'll figure it out. If the Holy Spirit's calling you to baptism, just come. For the rest of us who say, I believe in Jesus, I'm saved, I follow Jesus, I've already been baptized, we're a family, and your job is to celebrate with your new family, all right? And I say this every time we do baptisms, and I mean it. That's all right. You can go. Or go back. That's fine. (laughs) There you go. I mean it. If someone who is soaking wet wants to hug you after they were baptized, what's the rule? Got to hug them back. All right? All right. Let's baptize. All right.